we have a really special review today. We're taking a look at this Meadow palette from Antithes Art. And this was actually a Christmas present from my mom. I've been following their Instagram for a while. These are handmade watercolor paints from natural pigments, really beautiful colors. Of course it's unwrapped, it was a present. So uh, I did try to reassemble everything that was included. It did come wrapped up in some really pretty tissue paper to help protect it in transit, but otherwise it's sort of as is. Have all the paperwork here. So we're gonna go ahead and read it. Thank you for your support about our paints. Each color is hand mulled in small batches to ensure an even mix. We make our own binder from raw products, gum arabic, honey, and other ingredients to produce an artist grade quality paint. A small amount of natural preservative is added to enhance the longevity of the paints. The paints are highly pigment are highly pigmented and can be diluted with a significant amount of water to produce vibrant paintings. Each pigment is different and therefore behaves differently with the binding solution. As a result, each pigment has its own formula to produce the final product. We strive to create pan watercolors that have a high rewetting capacity. Some of our paints will remain tacky to the touch due to this quality. Please unwrap each pan slash cap carefully. Not only do we strive to produce a fine artist grade quality paint, but we also strive to produce a beautiful end product as well. However, our pan slash caps will not look perfect. They may crack or fill in evenly during the drying process, which is normal. Each pan slash cap is hand poured and dried gradually over a few weeks time. Yes, that's right. It can take up to three weeks to finish a single batch of paint. Paint takes a very long time to dry, especially for us in Florida where the air is very humid. We're always working to improve our paints to provide the best quality paints possible. Your feedback is always welcome. Thanks for checking out our little shop. Happy Paint, painting Angelique. And then their Etsy is etsy.com slash shop slash Antithes Arts. And their Instagram is at Antithes Arts. And I'm going to put all that in the description. Now, I promised my mom this wasn't a gift just for me to review. These are actually for me to enjoy. Um, but I did want to, of course, share them with you guys because I review a lot of inexpensive watercolors. So I thought it would be really nice, a nice change of pace to review some nice watercolors and look at something that was handcrafted by someone here in the U.S. And there's actually a few other people who handcraft watercolors and I hope over the years I get to explore their paints as well because there's something that is just very tantalizing for me as someone who hand paints her watercolor comics to be able to work with paints that are handmade. And I can't always, I certainly can't afford to use paints like this on seven inch Kara, but I would love to do maybe some floral studies or something, something that um, would really benefit from beautiful handmade paints. So this is the Meadow palette. It has tulip Mayan red, daffodil Mayan yellow, monarch yellow ochre, foliage green, damselfly Mayan blue, iris Mayan violet, amaryllis natural mineral, and chestnut warm umber. And it the tin it comes in, see, meadow small cups, or small caps, is has little swatches from the palette itself, which is also just a really nice touch. And they have, I think their quinacridones are really pretty. Also, um, I would love to explore, oh, and their stellar Mayan indigo is just beautiful. My camera's not, in fact, actually, I can fix this. Disregard that last statement. I just did something that should make the colors a lot more accurate. So we've got the sweet little tin. Carefully remove the belly band. Crafted with natural earth minerals and pigments. Antithes. Antithes. Handcrafted watercolor paints. Product of the USA. Inside, and it's like a little pocket tin. I could slip this into my purse. I could slip this into my pocket. Inside is a beautiful little swatch sheet with all those colors we just talked about. A tiny little sponge. And then our beautiful little caps. Look at that. Move this over to the side because we are going to be using water and I don't want to ruin everything. And as you guys can see, each cap is hand wrapped and it has a band around it and they look like little candies. They're adorable. Handcrafted watercolors, chestnut warm umber with the tiniest swatch. In fact, so tiny my camera's like, what are you doing? And for those of you who watch my channel for inexpensive watercolor reviews, this is pretty much the exact opposite of that. These are fairly pricey, but they are handmade. They're made in small batches by a single individual. They're made in the US, which 
I'm more excited about the made by a single individual and handmade because there's a lot of um, artists in the Philippines who make their own paint and I'm very interested in their paints as well. But slowly and carefully unwrap it like a beautiful little candy. And you can see a cap has been utilized and written the name on the bottom. It looks like it's got a magnet. <gasps> oh, that's amazing. It has a magnet. So what I was going to do is I was going to use some washi tape like I've done in other videos to kind of affix my paint down to the palette. But there's a magnet. So Angelique puts a magnet in them so that it will stick on its own. That is wonderful thinking. It's beautiful attention to detail. And I'm going to unwrap all of these on camera because this is a treat and we don't get to enjoy treats all too often here. So Iris Mayan Violet. And I'm just gonna slip the belly band off. And I also love that she hand wrote the name of the color on the bottom, on the bottom as well. Carefully, carefully unwrap this. And these are all, it's like um, aluminum. I know I, I have complained in the past about like, oh, a lot of extra, a lot of extra wrapping. It is important, of course, to wrap your watercolors. I'm glad they are. They have a belly band with a hand swatch and just the aluminum. And it's not like this and then a plastic coating, which some many pans will come with. And then they become really, this is also very easy to open, which is something... Oh, it's beautiful. Something I do take into consideration because, um, you know, some people... Oh, it smells amazing. That's Amaryllis Natural Mineral. Oh, it's got like this, this spicy smell. <laughs> yeah, only that one so far has that. So that must be... I wish you guys... I wish I could do like smell of vision so you guys could smell this. It smells beautiful, like... Frankincense or myrrh almost. It has that, it has that church smell. <laughs> but I mean that in like the most complimentary way. All right, Damselfly Mayan Blue. Oh yeah, I'm slipping the belly bands off. I'm not unwrapping them. That's another thing. The belly bands aren't so tight that you can't do that. Um, but going back to the arthritis thing, um, I know a lot of watercolorists, that's something that they do suffer from. So, you know, when the packaging is so impossible to get open. Oh, that one has a, it's not as nice as that, but it has a smell too. I'm gonna sniff all my paints now, guys. Um, let's see that a little bit. It's just something to consider, especially depending on who your demographic is. A lot of people have the time to pursue watercolor as a hobby or an interest when they're older. So um, a lot of people in that who are kind of returning to art um, may suffer from arthritis or other sort of fine motor problems. So like, you know, don't make your packaging impossible to get into. Oh, oh, sticky. Very careful. I don't want to leave any of the foil. Ooh, that has a smell too. But this one is the best. Monarch Yellow Ochre. And I'm not gonna mention the price in the video because this was a gift. I do know how much they cost. I'm gonna link um, this product if it's in her Etsy shop at the time. I'll link it in the description below. So if you're interested, if you're intrigued by these, you can check that out. But since this was a gift, I'm gonna at least pretend like I, I don't know what it costs. Tulip Mayan Red. And this is the sort of thing, I've actually been kind of following her Instagram for a year now. Um, I've been really interested in them for a while, but I can never justify buying them for myself, which is stupid because I really buy all kinds of garbage for this channel, but I could never justify. Oh, this one has a bit of the same smell as that. I wonder if they're using some of the same pigments. Um, I could just never justify buying something like this for myself because it's not in such a quantity that I can use it on Kara because I'll buy Daniel Smith and Windsor Newton and Holbein and Magello for Kara, but I, that's because I can get the tubes or the half pans. Um, but it was still a little too expensive for me to 
justify, but I'm super excited about this set. I love doing floral studies and I don't make enough time to do floral studies. And that's actually something people have requested more of. So I look forward hopefully to using this set to do some floral studies. All right, and our last one is Daffodil Lion Yellow. And it doesn't really have much of a smell either. All right, now, ah, I just love the little magnets. And yes, I know I could glue magnets to my half pants, but I use, I use washi tape on those because I'm lazy. And I'm, I'm also thinking about um, how I would best benefit from the color order. Okay, so neat, when you have them all unwrapped, there's room for the little sponge in the middle and that's for like lifting and kind of on the go corrections. <gasps> oh no. Okay, maybe I should redo the color order because like this, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what everything is. I know that's Mayan red. I know that is amaryllis natural mineral. I know that's burnt umber. You know what, let's just dive in. It says on the bottom of the pans anyway. Let's just dive in. So I'm going to do um, two types of swatching today. I don't normally do that. I'm going to use um, a cotton rag paper. I'm actually gonna use Kilimanjaro, which I really like. Um, but then for the sake of fairness, because when I do the cheap watercolors, I usually use a cellulose paper. I'm going to also swatch on fluid uh, easy block watercolor paper. So we're gonna get do two swatch tests today. So we're going to start with the Kilimanjaro watercolor paper. This is a cotton rag. This is my 300, what? I don't want to use 300 pound. I thought I have, in fact, I know I have 140 pound. I'll go dig my 140 pound Kilimanjaro up. But before we do that, I can start on the cellulose based paper, the fluid easy block paper, which actually still has another test on it. So I will just remove that. There we go, we've got a big cup of clean water. We've also got a little spritzer bottle of clean water and I'm gonna, kinda hate to do that, but I'm gonna do it. It's gotta get dirty someday. That's how you know some things are loved is they look like they've been used. And I'm going to use a, boop, 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 boop. yeah, of course, of course, a Series 7, Winsor Newton Series 7 sable brush. I knew it was a sable. I wasn't sure if it was Windsor Newton. You don't have to, of course, but we're using nice. We're doing nice things today. All right, guys, here's the first swatch. I might have to clean the water out. And probably didn't wait long enough for these to activate because I just spritzed them. But that's okay. That's a really pretty, the damsel, uh, what, let me see, what is it? The Damselfly Mayan Blue is really pretty. It's a, kind of a bluish purple. Oh yeah, this one. It reminds me of Venetian Red and it's a semi-opaque watercolor and it's definitely got a pretty smell to it. So since I kinda caught these paints unaware, I'm going to give them a benefit I don't give my cheaper paints usually, because I usually do a, a film, a field test, and I'll probably do a field test with these as well, but not immediately. I am gonna go look for my Kilimanjaro paper. I'm gonna let the water sort of activate the pans, and then I'm gonna re-swatch them on the cellulose paper. All right, the Kilimanjaro 140 pound has gone on a permanent hiatus of hiding from me. So I'm going to use this 140 pound Arches cotton rag paper instead. And... I'm just gonna go ahead now and re-swatch these colors, starting from Tulip Mayan Red. Let's see if we can get, no, not necessarily more intensity. It'll be interesting to see how these perform on, well, a little more intense, how they perform on the cotton rag paper. I was hoping for something with less tooth. Kilimanjaro doesn't have quite as much tooth as the rough arches that I'm gonna be using, but 300 pound paper is really wasted on a swatch test. If I had some like 300 pound scraps around, that would be different, but I really, ooh. Yeah, the green, some of these colors really do change once they've had a chance to absorb some more water, which is good. 
I figured they would. That's why we activate our pigments when possible. All right, so these are our wet swatches on fluid cold press cellulose based easy block paper. Now, I'm gonna switch over to the arches. So this is cotton rag paper and it's on a block. You're gonna start at the same point on the wheel and that's gonna make labeling all of this easier for me. And of course, since this is a rough press, you've got a lot more texture. Actually, rough press might be really fun with these because it's already kind of, you get more speckling and some of the color will kind of fall down into the valleys. So you definitely get more optical interest, but it's a little harder naturally to swatch on a rough press paper like this. Probably end up slicing the swatch off of the paper and salvaging the rest of the paper for maybe even the field test for this. I mean, it won't be on the block. I'll have to secure it, but. I dare say the colors are a little bit more vibrant on the cotton rag paper, but of course, we're gonna need to let it dry and then check on it again. All right, so this is damp, but it's not like surface damp. It's just cool to the touch. I definitely think on the cotton rag papers, I mean, on the cellulose paper, once you let the paint actually activate, you do get more intense colors with boo -boo -boo -boo, daffodil, Mayan yellow, almost being a fluorescent here. It's got that kind of hint of green that makes it almost chartreuse and makes it kind of fluorescent-y. On the cotton rag based paper, you get a lot more depth of color and I feel like you can really appreciate these colors for what they are. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for you guys, but you can see a little bit of sedimentation. You can see how some of the color is falling into the, sh into the valleys on the paper and really adding a nice visual depth of color, um, especially with these translucent colors. They're just beautiful. And this tells me that these paints are wasted. In my opinion, they're wasted on cellulose-based papers. I really should be using them on cotton rags that can really reflect the colors accurately. So that's what I'm gonna use with these. I'm gonna use cotton rag papers and hopefully I'll have some beautiful pieces to share with you guys in the near future. So thank you guys so much for watching this sort of mini review, unbox and swatch of the Antithesis Arts. It's always so hard for me to say. Meadow palette with the small caps. Mm, the boop, 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 boop. Amaryllis Mineral Natural, or Natural Mineral, just makes the whole palette smell amazing. And I love the fact that they have little magnets on the bottom. I know some companies also do that. I think Holbein has little magnets, or yeah, I think it is Holbein, has magnets on um, the bottoms of their half pants in order to hold them in place. But most of the palettes I've worked with don't have that. And yeah, that is something fairly easy to do, but it's so nice that Angelique thought about doing that and actually did it. Like that's such a nice little attention to detail. And I know these little metal tins are fairly easy to come by, but the addition of the magnet just makes it so much more worthwhile, so much more valuable, you know? It's a little thing like that, one little very thoughtful addition that really, trying not to get red on my tiny sea sponge. Maybe I should wait until these dry all the way. There we go. I'm gonna leave this open so they can dry. I'm in Tennessee now, but I'm originally from Louisiana and I can definitely vouch that uh, even just waiting for a watercolor painting to dry takes a million years when you live in a high humidity area. So I can only imagine the um, enormous amount of patience it takes to allow these to dry enough so that you can ship them out. So I wanna thank my mother. Thank you, Denise Hilburn, so much. I really, enjoy them. I'm really excited about them. I know this doesn't tell you, my mother who does not paint, a whole lot about these paints, but I'm sure the field test will. I think um, these can do something that my other paints don't actually do. So I'm really excited. And they're colors that I don't already own. Well, with the exception of a yellow ochre and a Venetian type red, these are all colors that are already different from the palette that I, palettes and the paints that I already own. So they do add something 
new and exciting for me to uh, my repertoire. And it really makes me want to do more floral paintings. I think this is a great palette for that. Um, and landscape paintings, you know, the meadow palette. So I am looking forward to doing that and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was as much a treat for you guys as it was for me. So I'll see you again really soon. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.